the devil is a liar. Oh, you didn't hear me. The devil is a liar. And he's been lying to some of you. He's tried to put depression on you. He's tried to put anger on some of you. Some of you can't hardly sleep at night because of fear. You're afraid. Some of you struggle with addictions, with drugs, with alcohol, cocaine. Some of you still turn to smoke a little marijuana every now and then. Come on, somebody. Don't act so holy. I know some of y'all still working on your testimony. Some of you can't just let your yes be yes and your no be no. Profanity just keeps coming out of your mouth. And you just excuse it because you got mad. But the Lord dropped a word in my spirit several weeks ago. And I've been just waiting to get here to, to share it with you. And it's, it's just simple, one simple word. There's some things that we need to get settled. Oh, you didn't hear me. See, some of you haven't made up your mind about some things that need to be settled. You're still wishy-washy. You're still riding the fence. Look at your neighbor and say, settled. There's some things that need to be settled right now. Now, some of you, you settled some things. If I said to y'all, let's go rob a bank. Most of you would say, oh, no, 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 I can't, I can't do that. That's settled in my mind. I, I will never rob a bank. It's settled. See, you got some things settled, so you know how to settle some things. Do I need to be plain? You know how to settle some things because there are some things you've already settled. But there's some other things you ain't got settled. Some of you men and some of you women. When you smell the perfume or the cologne of somebody and your needs are not being met at home, you allow those fumes to intoxicate your brain and you go somewhere you shouldn't go and you do something you should not do because it's not settled. Some of you, maybe you can't make ends meet or maybe you're just a, a thief. I don't know. But some of you go to Walmart and you'll put something in the, in the purse or put something in the bag and you'll try to slip out. Now they've got all these self-checkout. So it's just real easy to maybe check some of them, but don't check some of them. And you break one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not steal. Because it's not settled. Am I at the wrong place? I came to tell you today it's time to get some things settled. There's some things that you've been riding the fence on and they need to be settled. There's some things that are still undecided. Oh, you kinda, you kinda leaning to the right way. But if it hit you just right, if the temptation was just right, if nobody was around, if you were out of town, you might just go back to that old life and do something you know better to do. And I'm going to tell you why. It's because in your mind, it has never been settled. I need to tell you that where we are in the body of Christ, where we are, chronologically on the spiritual clock of God's timepiece we must get some things settled now some of you need to get it settled that you're not going to play church anymore you're tired of playing church and you're ready to be after God a hundred percent a thousand percent ten thousand percent everything that is in you you're ready to pursue God and be all God has called you to be and that's most of us. I thought I'd get an amen right there. Bump your neighbor and say, settled. Get it settled. We got to get it settled. There's some things that need to be settled. In Jesus' name. Father, we just call on you today. 
and ask you to help us. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for what we sense, for what we know, for what we feel. We thank you for your presence and your anointing that has stirred this place today. We thank you, Lord, for the presence of your anointing that has brought healing in this house, that has brought deliverance in this house time and time again, that has brought miracles in this place over and over again. We thank you, Lord, for what we know, for what we sense, and even what we feel right now, your presence. We give you thanks. But, Lord, we ask you to help us. Help us to cross over the unsettled line and settle some things today. Some things that have troubled us, some things that have plagued us, some things that have tormented us, some things that have caused us to fall back. Help us today to get those things settled in our spirit today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Settled, settled, settled in Jesus' name. Father, I come in faith believing to break assignments, to break curses, to break generational curses, to break them off today in the name of Jesus and once and for all for some things to be settled in the spirit realm and to be settled in the lives of your people today. Settled in Jesus' name. We praise you now, God. We pray, God, that you would just speak clearly to us, to our spirits. Let the words that are spoken today, let the scriptures that are quoted today and put on the screen, let those those be loud and clear so we don't fall back, jump back, run back, look back, but let things be settled in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. When something is settled, it's established, it's fixed, we get resolved. And there there are different kinds of settlements. You know, if you have an accident and you have insurance, the insurance company will try to settle with you. Your car may be worth $30,000, you know, they want to settle with you for twenty. dollars I'm telling the truth. I had a family member about a year ago and they tried to settle with him for significantly less than what the car was worth. He couldn't couldn't buy another car used for what they wanted to give him. They want to settle with you. And sometimes when when we have settlements, when there is a settlement, an arrangement, negotiation is involved. Americans like to negotiate, some of them. Some don't. I like to negotiate. Let me, let me change that. I like to negotiate. Some folks, they just want you to tell you. They just want you to tell them how much it is. And if, they, if you tell them five prices more than it's worth, they're not going to negotiate. They just settle. Let me, let me break something to you gently. You get what you negotiate, not what you deserve. I need to say that again. You get what you negotiate, not what you deserve. But there are settlements that come. Sometimes we like the settlements, sometimes we don't like the settlements. In the early West, 150, 250 years ago, they called them settlements when people would come to a certain area and they would settle, settle down. Put down roots. Stay a spell. They settled there. So they called the places settlements. Sometimes you're tired, you've worked all day, you come home, you get your sweet tea. I hope you get your sweet tea or your Diet Coke or whatever you drink that's not intoxicating. And you sit back in your recliner and you settle in with the remote for the evening you settle in after a while you get up and you go to bed and you settle in for the night to get a night's sleep you you settle down you settle in those are kinds of 
settling that we do. So when you settle, when something is settled, it's fixed for a moment. It is established. Resolve takes place. You stop moving around when you settle and you stay there. So I want to tell you today, the Bible talks about being settled. As a matter of fact, there is divine settlement. That means to be supernaturally restored to a place of glory and power. Divine settlement. Divine settlement is peace and rest. How many know that God can give you peace and rest in the midst of your situation, in the midst of your fear, in the midst of your bankruptcy, in the midst of your divorce, in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your sorrows, in the midst of your whatever it might be, your addiction. God can settle you down and give you peace and rest. I know in 1 Peter he said, gird up the loins of your mind. See, the mind is the battleground. And so many times we struggle in the mind. We, we battle in our mind with whatever it is that is trying to attack us or a plague us. And I might tell you, you might not like this, but I'm going to tell you anyway, it's not always the devil. You know, we want to blame everything on the devil. It's not always the devil. As a matter of fact, the book of James, the Bible says, every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So some of the problems we have, when you want to point somebody, point a finger at somebody else, just remember there's three more pointed back at you. But God can give you peace and rest so you can be settled down. He said, gird up the loins of your mind because the battleground is in the mind. So he's saying, calm down. Pastor Rita says it like this often, breathe. Breathing is not overrated. Breathe. Everybody just take a deep breath. Just let it out. Take another one. Let it out. Just rest. Just calm. Did you know God can restore your health? You didn't act like you believed it. You, that, was, that was so weak. God's a healer. Anybody been healed of anything? Raise your hand at me. Wave at me if you've been healed. Now, while you're waving, look around and see the hands of people that have been healed. God can settle you down when you need to be healed by healing your body and you just relax in his presence. You stand on his word and then you thank him because he healed you by his stripes. Healed. He can restore your health. When you need to be delivered and he delivers you, that is divine settlement. You can go to 10, 12 steps. And they may help you. They may teach you some things. They may encourage you. May they, they may tell you, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. But God's the one that can do it. You can't do it by yourself or you were, already would have. You need deliverance. You need to be set free. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Everything is brand new. Divine settlement, deliverance. He'll give you a favorable turnaround when everything needs to turn around. You know, I'm a, I'm a big advocate of symbolic action. I'm a big advocate of symbolic action. I think you need to do something in faith. Take another step. You want to see a turnaround in your life? Just turn around. Break something off. You need to go to a new, stevel, a, a new level, a new place. Step up to another level. See things different. Take another step. See things different. Are you tracking with me? Divine settlement. He wants to settle you. Well, the Bible talks about being settled. Forever, O oh Lord, your word, your what? Your word is settled in heaven forever. 
His word is settled. Now when your children come to you and they ask you to do something and the answer is no and you go no. Most of them know it's not settled because they'll come back again. And they'll ask you again. Or they'll go ask mama. And if they, if they can get you divided, then, then it's settled. They get their way. But when they come and ask you for something, you go, no, no. And they keep asking, no. And they keep asking, no. And you keep saying, no, 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 no. And finally, because you are weary, you go, okay. See, they knew it wasn't settled. I'm trying to teach you something. We learned a long time ago from my pastor and mentor, Dr. Ray, read his dad. We learned to say, we'll see. Never say yes, never say no. Up front, buy some time. Be sure the baby hadn't already gone to mama and gotten a no and then comes to me and I say yes and then we're divided. I'm gonna talk to her. I wanna buy some time. She does the same thing. We'll see. We'll wait. We'll check it out. We'll look at it. We'll evaluate. Because when you say no, if the answer is really no, you need to stick with it. And if it's okay to be yes, then don't say no and change your mind later because you are teaching them it is not settled. I'm preaching better than you're shouting right there because you know you're guilty with your kids or your spouse because it's not settled. The peanut gallery is preaching over here now. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled. I don't have time to cover it all. This could be a series for a month or two months or three months. But I want to put some things in your spirit today that need to be settled. First of all, your salvation, your purpose in life, it must be settled. You don't need to leave this place without having it settled. You don't need to leave this place without knowing where your spirit and soul will go when you die. You don't want to go to hell, promise me. You don't want to go to hell. You need to get that settled. If there's anything in this world, in this life that you need to get settled, it is your right relationship with Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I don't care if you've got $10 million in the bank. I don't care if you've written bestseller books and you've been on Broadway, if you've been an NFL player, NBA player. I don't care what you've done, how many movies you've made, how many times you've circled the globe, how much you own, how many airplanes and cars and expensive gifts that you own. If you don't get your soul settled, if you don't get your relationship with Jesus settled, you have missed the point of your life. And if you're waiting for a better time, if you're waiting for the right time, if you're waiting for the right service or the right preacher or to have on the right clothes or to be at the right place or to wait for the right crisis to come back to, you have missed the boat. The Bible says, now is the day of salvation. Now. When? Now, right now, now is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time, the Bible says. So why would you wait? Why would you put off something so significant that could change your future forever? Why would you sit in a place like this and hear the kind of anointed music and the anointed speakers that come through this place and not be right with God? Why would you play with your soul? Why would you hold it in your hand and allow it to be crushed? Why would you hold it in your hand with undecision? Why would you hold it in your life and, and tempt God and do things that you know will send you to hell? Why? Because when you face God, it will be too late to say, I'm sorry. I wish I had done this. I wish I had gotten saved that day. It will be too late. And yet people come in places like this week after week, month after month, year after year and go through the motions or they come because they're coming with a family member. I've seen teenagers do it. Teenagers will come. They'll sit in the back 
And they're just here because mama brought them, because daddy brought them. Or a spouse. Just going through the motions. Heart's not in it. Ma'am, sir, young lady, young man, you're going to split hell wide open. Do I need to say it plain? Do I need to get down here and tell you? You're going to split hell wide open. Does that not bother you? Does that not concern you? Does that not get your attention? Does it not worry you that you don't have it settled? Oh, I go to church. I sang the songs with them today. I saw them on the screen and I sang with them. I come to the revival too. I was here for Sunday night fire. Uh Uh-huh. But you don't have it settled. You're going through the motions. You're playing church. Let me tell you what you're doing. You're gambling with your soul. I got more, but I'm just parked here. I, I can't go further for a moment. You're gambling with your soul. Let me tell you something about gambling. It's usually rigged against you. You can go to Vegas. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's right, all that money you took, it stays when you come home. Because you're playing against the house. And the house is going to win. They'll let somebody win every now and then just to keep you coming back. But gambling is rigged against you. I guarantee you, if you interviewed a thousand people that went up here to Cherokee, North Carolina, to the casino, interview a thousand, about 9,000 of them going to lose money. You'll get that after a while. Some of y'all went right over your head. It's not, it's not rigged for you to win. It's rigged for you to lose. The odds are against you. And if you are going through the motions and you're playing church and you're just showing up every now and then just to save face, you're losing face, baby. You're gambling with your soul. Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse 14. If you want to get it settled. Then we will no longer be like babies, infants, tossed, tossed back and forth, to and fro by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching or doctrine by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. When you get it settled, this is saying you won't be like a baby tossed to and fro. You won't be mixed up with every doctrine that comes along, every teaching that comes along, every deceitful scheme that comes along. You won't be tossed to and fro. You won't be hot one day and cold the next and then hot one day and cold the next. You get it settled. You get your salvation settled. You get it right with God. You know that it's appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. So you're gonna get it right. So when you face God, he will look at you and say, well done my good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Welcome home. Because if he doesn't say that because you didn't get it settled, the other response, according to the Bible, he's gonna look at you and say, depart from me. I never knew you. And you can say, oh, but we... We cast out devils in your name. We went to CR and got people delivered and we cast out devils in your name and we did miracles in your name. He's gonna say, depart from me. You workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Does that not bother you? 
Does it not bother you enough to quit riding the fence? Does it not bother you enough to stop playing church? Does it not bother you enough to quit going through the motions? Does it not bother you enough to get it settled once and for all and just say, oh God, forgive me of my sins. I've messed up my life. I've screwed up my life. I've made too many bad choices, too many bad decisions. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart and help me day by day. Help me to get it settled today, right now, once and for all. For all. Your salvation, your purpose, because you've got a purpose. Whether it's settled or not, God's got a purpose for you. He said, I know the thoughts that I think for you, thoughts of a future and a hope. Not of evil, but a future and a hope. God's got a plan for you. God's got a purpose for your life. And if you're riding the fence, I, I need to tell you, it's a whole lot bigger than what you think it is. It's a whole lot bigger than your little puny plans, your few little thousands of dollars that you make or your little fun that you call, that you have, your little flings, your little journeys and your little whatever it is. What God's got for you is a whole lot bigger than that. You're playing with God. You're, play, you're gambling with your soul. Wake up. Get it settled. And then let me just hit everybody. Get your toes out here so I can step on them. Just slide them out because I'm going to step on some toes. You've got to get your value system settled. Let me translate. You need to clearly discern between right and wrong. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. Say, Pastor, you're mean today. I'm trying to get you settled. I'm trying to get you on your way to heaven. I'm trying to get you off the fence. I'm trying to get you to quit playing church and quit going through the motions and quit playing patty cake with the devil. I'm trying to get you to wake up. We are in the last of the last days. We're in a place in the earth we've never been before. Oh, and I know COVID settled down and everybody thinks, well, we're past that. It's back to normal. It will never be back to normal, honey. It will never be back to normal. That was a trial run, getting ready for the mark of the beast, getting ready for the tribulation, the end time, to see how much they can control people. And they control most of us. Come on. Let me change that. It come to control most of y'all. didn't control me. They said, close the church. Well, we were in here for about four weeks streaming. And most people stayed home in all the churches because everything was closed, but we were in here streaming. And then we did two weeks in the parking lot. And a lot of people weren't doing that because they said, you can't. So one Sunday we didn't because the mayor's office called me and said, we forbid you to have service on Easter service in your parking lot. We forbid you. And I went round and round for a little while and I thought, well, I don't want people arrested on Easter Sunday. So reluctantly, I said, okay. But the next week, we sued the mayor and we sued the city of Chattanooga. And we said, y'all wrong. And we came back in. And we ain't going out again. I'm sorry. If, if they have to haul me off, I'll preach from the jail. And Pastor Rita will preach while I'm gone. And if, if they haul her off, Dr. Shirley will preach. And if they haul her off, Tony Doley will preach. If they haul him off, then Tanya will preach or Beaver will preach or some of y'all will preach. Adam will preach and Olivia will preach. They can preach. I'm telling you, they can preach. And every time they try to shut us up, Somebody will rise up and the word of God will go forth. And if that ever happens, I promise this place will be overflowing. It will be fuller than it's ever been. Come on, somebody. We are living in a day. We are living in a time. And we must settle some things that have not been settled. 
I came here to tell you today, you've got to get them settled. You know what they are. You know what's not settled. You know what you're struggling with. You know what your weak link is. You know what you've been battling with for a long time. And today is the day to get it settled. It's time for a settlement. It's time to stop negotiating. It's time to say, it's done, it's done, it's done. My mind is made up. My foot is on the rock and I'm reaching up to him. It is settled, settled, settled. Let me give you a good scripture on that. It's over there in Ephesians chapter four, verse 21. When you heard about Christ, how many have heard about him? Wave at me if you've heard about Jesus. And you were taught him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. How many have been taught the word of God? Wave at me. I want to be sure I'm at the right place, talking to the right people. Verse 22, you were taught with regard to your former way of life. Now let me just pause right there and say, when you get saved, what are you getting saved from? What are you getting saved from? And and let me ask you this, if you get saved and you don't change the way you live, the way you act, the things you say, the way you talk, the places you go, what you do, if nothing changes, what did you get saved from? Let me just preach while I'm right here. I'm gonna come back to that verse, but let me just say that when you get saved, if you still do all the sinful things that you did before you got saved, honey, you ain't saved. You might think you're saved, but you're not saved. You might attend church, but you're not saved. You might sing on the praise team or in the choir, but you're not saved. You might work in the kids' ministry, but you're not saved. You don't live like the devil when you get saved. I wish I could get some help up in here. Verse 22, you were taught with regard to your former life to put off your old self. There it is right there. When you get saved, you put off the old self. You put off the old life. You stop doing the things that you do. You stop smoking marijuana. You stop snorting cocaine. You stop taking crack. You stop drinking. You stop having affairs with somebody and being unfaithful to your spouse. You stop fornicating. You stop stealing at Walmart. You stop all of that sinful stuff. You stop, you stop, you stop because you got saved and it's settled. You can't keep living the sinful life once it's settled. Why do you think you can? Oh, I heard what you said. Well, well, Pastor, most of that stuff I stopped. Most of it. I really changed. I'm so proud of me. Pat me on the back because I really changed. I stopped most of that. There's just a few little things that I do now that don't hurt nobody Uh uh-huh you fooling yourself and you are gambling with your soul because you don't have it settled this this era is different this generation is different when I was raised when I was growing up when I went to church when I went to camp and got the Holy Ghost. When I went to Christian Bible College, if you were living in sin, you had a mark on you. Everybody knew it. And most everybody else was serving God. So if you're buying, if you're buying drugs in the dorm, word gets out real fast. And so when I fell back, let me translate, I backslid. Oh, I know, some of y'all think you can't backslide. (laughs) That's another doctrine for another time. But I I know I had been saved. I'd been full of the Holy Ghost. I had had preached. I had done the works of the Lord. All those things that some folks are going to say when they get to heaven and Jesus says, why should you let, I let you in? He says, depart from me, you that work iniquity. I, never, I, I say, oh, but Lord, I cast out devils in your names. I had done that. I'd done all those things. But when I started smoking marijuana and got kicked out of college, 
I won't save, buddy. That's the way they say it in North Carolina. You won't save. That's the way they say it. Then they say, I'm going to hope you. That means help you. Over there, I'm going to hope you. Well, I need some hope. Hope me out. <laughs> but I had to get it settled because I wasn't saved. I had backslidden. I had fallen back. Let me make it plain. I fell off the wagon. Our responsibility is when somebody falls off the wagon, stop the wagon if you have to. Go back and pick them up. Help them as they dust themselves off and say, hey, I'm not letting you get away that easy. The devil is a lie. He wants you to fall off the wagon. He wants to show you the pleasures of sin for a season, but he is a liar. I don't care where you came from. Where we are going is much better than anything you've got in your past. We, we, we were built to go forward. Let's go forward. You've got to know what your value system is. You've got to get it settled, settled, settled in your spirit. Verse 22, you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self. Why? Because it is being corrupted by deceitful desires. Your old man was corrupted. Your deceitful desires, your lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life will take you to hell. Verse 23, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, verse 24, and to put on the new self. It's so simple. Take off the robe of the old flesh, the old man, the old self, the old sinful self. You take that off just like you take off a robe and you put on a new robe. You put on a new man. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. All things are passed away. All things are brand new. So you put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness. And I'm going to finish you. Just hold on. Put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness. He wants you to be like him. Let's just pause a minute now. Those, those folks that think it's okay just to mostly change, but still do a few old things. Let's bring Jesus in. You think Jesus was snorting cocaine? You think Jesus would be snorting today if he was here today in the flesh? And say, oh... I like that high I get. So let me snort a little bit. You think he would be smoking blunts? You think Jesus would be frequenting places of prostitution? Would Jesus be doing that? Let me tell you, if Jesus did all of that, there wouldn't be no church today. None of us would be here. He wouldn't be the one we would want to follow. Think about that now. So, why would we think it's all right to live a sinful life? Why do we think it's all right? We must. We must think it's okay. I've killed it. You want to preach now? Which one of y'all want to preach now? You want to preach? You want to preach a bit? You want to preach a bit? Yeah, I've killed it. I have killed it. Verse 24, and to put on the new self created to be like God. He created you to be like him in true righteousness. That means that when we start emulating him and acting like him, we become Christians. Because... Christ is spelled C-H-R-I-S-T. The last three letters are I-A-N. That could easily stand for I am nothing. When you take it away from Christ, I am nothing. But when you put it on the end, then you are 
putting on the new self because he created us to be like God in true righteousness. And then there's one little word he tagged on the end. Holiness. Holiness. Dr. A used to teach us like this, triple A holiness. Attitude, your attitude needs to be holy. Quit acting a fool. Quit getting your tongue in gear before you get your mind in gear and saying things that embarrass you in the body of Christ. Have the right attitude. Treat people right. Especially when you're out in public and you're at a restaurant or you're at a store and just because somebody didn't do what you thought they ought to do or the waitress didn't bring coffee hot enough for you, don't you be rude to her. She may have five snotty old kids at home. She's a single mom and she's doing the best she can and you as a Christian, you're going to fuss at her because the coffee wasn't hot. You need to leave about a 50 cent, 50% tip and bless her or leave a hundred dollar bill and help her and say Jesus just wanted me to bless you today stop being rude we need to be holy in our attitude and our actions triple A holiness attitude, action and you're going to love the third one appearance you need to look holy you need to dress holy folks running around half naked Yeah, mostly women, my wife said. Mostly women run around half naked. Oh, let that one sink in. And see, the reason some of the men didn't say nothing is because they like to look at them. Well, if you're looking, you're unholy too. <laughs> Hebrews twelve fourteen. write this verse down. Hebrews 12, 14, here's what it says. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. The word holiness comes from a, a Greek word, hagios, hagiosmos, and it means to be holy, to be sanctified, to be pure in thought, in deed, in action, holy and pure. That's what God is. As a matter of fact, the angels around the throne of God cry out 24-7, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Holy, 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 24-7, because he's a holy God. There is nothing unholy in him. So when you look at this verse, I, I wish I had time to preach this whole verse and talk about it, but he wants us to be living, put on the new self because we're created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Our faith must be settled. I'm only halfway through, and it's quitting time. But I don't know if y'all could take this two weeks in a row. If I stopped now and came back next week and recapped all this, I, I don't know that you could take it two weeks in a row. So I'm going to hurry. You've got you to gotta settle your faith. Your faith has to be settled. 2 Timothy 1.12, I know in whom I, am, I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him until that day. Do you know who you believed in. Did you believe in Jesus? Did you believe in Jesus as the son of the living God? If you believed in him, if he is the one you invited into your heart, if he is the one that saved you, then your faith ought to be settled and you ought to believe every word in the book. If he says, by my stripes you're healed, when you get that settled, if you get sick, you just take it to him and say, Father, your word says that you healed me, that by your stripes I am healed. So in Jesus' name, touch me now and let the healing manifest. And it has to. And you say to the mountain, be moved, be cast into the sea. If you believe in your heart and do not doubt, then it has to move. Job 22, I, I, I can't preach faith without going there. I, I don't have time. I don't have time. He said, declare a thing, Job twenty two twenty eight. declare a thing that it might be established for you. Your life follows your words. What are you declaring every day? We declare things like, 
My head is killing me. My back is killing me. My kids are going to kill me. We say all that stupid negative stuff. Your words are powerful. Be careful what you say. We've got to get our, our faith settled. Marilyn, that'd be a good time for you to go, what you say? We have to be careful what we say. If you've been here a while, you know that's what she says, what you say. I pastored a church one time many years ago. I had a guy sat on the front row, and when I'd start preaching, he would sit there, and he'd go, <laughs> promise, he did. <laughs> he would say, preach him, Jesus. <laughs> one day I stopped, and I said, brother, I'm preaching all I can preach right now. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, we got to get some things settled. <laughs> you want to preach now? <laughs> I've lost it now. <laughs> your future hope must be settled. Revelation 1, 7 and 8. Behold, Jesus is coming with the clouds. And every eye will see him. And here's him speaking. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. He's coming in the clouds. He's coming like he promised. He's coming for a blood-bought church. He's coming for a holy church. He's coming for a true and righteous church. He's coming for folks that got it settled in their mind. They've got their salvation settled. They've got their faith settled. They've got their hope in him settled. And everything is settled. And they realize we are part of the remnant body. These are the last days. And it's settled in our mind. And from now on, from this point, we will do what God has called us to do. Somebody get on your feet and shout hallelujah to the Lamb of the living God. Get this scripture in your spirit. Snap a picture of it. Don't forget this one. Joshua chapter 24. It's your choice if you want to get things settled. It's up to you. It's your choice. If I could settle it for you, I would. Jesus has done everything that he can to settle it for you. But here's what Joshua said. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, he said, you've got to decide. You've got to make up your mind. If you keep playing church, that's your business. If you keep going through the motions, that's your business. Let me just insert, it would be a tragedy to sit in an environment and an atmosphere like this and not get it settled. And then on judgment day, when you want to fix it, when you realize how foolish you've been, and he says, depart from me you worker of iniquity depart from me I never knew you what a tragedy what a tragedy that would be I'm not going to say that will be because I'm believing God who has already convicted you has open arms waiting for you so you will make a decision to get your soul settled today, once and for all. And you will stop gambling with your soul. But here's what Joshua said. But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. 
Make up your mind. Even if you're not going to serve God, just make up your mind. Get it settled once and for all. And Joshua says, but as for me, I've made up my mind. As for my family, we've made up our mind. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord Jesus. No going back, no turning back, no looking back, no falling back, no backsliding. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord.